Hi, this is the first example of moment of inertia, and I'm just going to do a quick, uh, quick little problem here, and I just want us to find the inertia about x. So you have two different shapes here, and notice that um, first of all, we're going to need to find some key facts about each of them. First of all, we'll need to determine the moment that, or not the moment, but the inertia about each of these shapes centroids and we'll need to find the area of each of these shapes then we'll need to use the parallel axis theorem to determine what that inertia will influence when it's applied to the when it's rotating about the x-axis so anyway let's let's just hop right in um, you have, first of all, you have inertia of the triangle, so I don't know how I'm going to label this, just C1. We know that that equals 1 36th base times height cubed. So since I mean, since it's all tabulated, it's kind of it's kind of convenient because you can really just pump through a lot of these problems. Base is 10 inches. Height is 9 inches, and that's cubed. When you work that all out, you have a 202.5 inches to the fourth power. If we take a look at the amount of inertia the box has about its centroid, we find that it's 1 12th base times height cubed. Once again, well, when you work all that out, it's 1 12th base, which is 10, height, which is 10 cubed, you get a resulting inertia of 833.3 inches to the fourth power. Much more inertia in that one. About its own centroid, though. Now, we know that um, the parallel axis theorem is going to be I will equal I plus AD squared. So we need the area of each of these shapes if we're going to bring it back down to um, the x-axis. Because right now all we have is the inertia about x1 and x2, or c1 and c2. Okay, so Area 1, area of the triangle, is going to be 1 half base times height, which will equal 1 half 10 times 9, which we will know to equal 45 inches squared. Area 2 will just equal base times height, which we know is 10 times 10, which equals 100 inches squared. Okay, so now when we translate each of these to the x-axis, um, we'll be able to just add them together. So quite simply, I just do ix will equal what I'm going to call i of the c1, the triangle, plus the area of the triangle, so A1, D squared, plus I of the uh, of the square, so the inertia about the centroid of the square, plus A2, D squared. Okay, so that I mean that's that's not really too strict. I mean we have all that information now. I um, about uh, the inertia about the centroid of the triangle is going to equal 202.5. So you have 202.5 plus the area of the triangle, which is going to equal 45 times d squared which the distance between the centroid of the triangle and the x-axis 
is going to equal the height the height of the box plus the additional 3. So 10 plus 3, that would be 13. 13 squared. So this whole thing plus the next one, which is going to equal 833.3 plus the area, which is 100 times the distance, which is 5 squared. And when you work all this out, you'll find that the inertia due to the triangle is 7,807.5, and that's inches uh, to the fourth power, plus 3,333.3 uh, inches to the fourth power. And realize that even though there was more area underneath the underneath the rectangle, the fact that it was not uh, further away, it makes less of an effect on the inertia about the x-axis. So if we just do a, a linear combination, you see we add them up, you'll have 11,140.8, and that's inches to the fourth power. And this is important. What you realize here is that area does not is not the most influential uh, part of this analysis. And it's actually the distance. The distance is squared. So what you'll find is that um, something could be twice as much area, but since it's twice as close, it does less momentum, or less. Uh, it creates less inertia about that axis. So anyway, let's go on to the next example.